Hi everyone, welcome back. In our previous video, we discussed the fundamentals of K nearest neighbor algorithm, exploring how it functions as a powerful and quite intuitive and simple machine learning tool. In this video, we'll be diving deeper into crucial aspect of KNN, determining the optimal value of K. K means the number of neighbors. The value of K represents the number of nearest neighbors considered when making predictions for new data points. So selecting a right K or right value of K is essential in achieving optimal performance and accuracy in your model. In this video, we will explore various methods and techniques to help you identify the most suitable value of k for a particular specific data set so let's get started so what is the recommended value of k number of neighbors unfortunately no such method or no method exists uh, which can tell us to uh, you know use a particular optimal value for k experiments have to be conducted experiments are required and uh, what kind of experiments uh, that is more to do with the model selection model evaluation choosing k is actually a challenge and depends on many factors so there are two extremes one is uh, k equals to one that means one single neighbor so that would make the uh, model very sensitive to a particular data point it can be beneficial as well when we're dealing with data sets where local um, local patterns are more uh, reliable or more uh, relevant than the overall broad global patterns low computational cost when you go for number of neighbors equals to one training a knn model with the k equals to one is computationally less expensive compared to k equals to a higher value of k complex decision boundaries that means the model really goes uh, to a particular sample and hence the decision boundaries tend to be more complex it more towards the training samples that means it's uh, it is able to uh, capture the intricate and little overlapping kind of a pattern in the data set if which is not possible if you use a larger value of k but then there is potential for overfitting as well with the small value or k equals to one if the data point uh, happens to be a noisy data or the neighbor happens to be a noisy one then the prediction quality may be a big question the other end we have k equals k is greater than one or multiple nearest neighbor it gives a uh, model now considers more number of neighbors and leading to a more robust model and that typically generalizes well to a new data new test point since we are considering more number of samples as neighbors then uh, sensitivity to outlier is also sort of contained improved generalization because of more number of samples that we consider as neighbors reduce overfitting is a consequence of the the broad uh, aspect of generalizing based on more than one neighbor to make a final prediction so in a way uh, finding the right optimal value is between the value of one and let's say the value the maximum value which is the number of samples in the data set so we need to find out the optimal setting for the value of k the techniques available are cross -valid validation methods we can use cross validation method to find out the optimal value of k or we use a hyperparameter optimization tool like randomized grid search or grid search 
I'm going to show you a simple example of you know how we uh, find uh, the optimal value of k using a simpler you know data set. Let's say you know, breast cancer data set. Let's move on to the demo. The first example that I'm going to walk you through is uh, based on a dummy data set. Let's say uh, I have some dummy data here, the name, salary, and expenses, and the attributes. And uh, I just load them in, in a data frame. And my training samples are salaries and expenses. And then this is a little function to compute the Euclidean distance. And then we are going to use a heap queue to find out the nearest samples here. So let's visualize how this actually works. The test point, let's say the black one, the black dot is a test point, and we went for number of neighbors equals to three. So for example, here, when we train the model, we actually use the number of neighbors three. So that uh, tells you whether this is a right setting or not. So this problem can be expanded by using uh, make blobs and generating more number of samples to sim simulate your data. And then we can apply the similar widgets. It's good for two dimensional data set. That means if you have more than two column, make sure we have multiple experiments uh, with each pair of possible column. For example, here, number of neighbors is one which means the black dot is a test sample and the red one is a neighbor. So obviously this may not be the right solution because you're looking at exact one neighbor being considered for prediction. So let's uh, increase it and you see more number of neighbor neighbors are now being considered. And as you grow more and more, you are going to encompass more number of neighbors in your final decision making as to what class the black dot actually belongs to. So this is more like a preliminary uh, you know, investigation or exploratory data analysis to find out what would be the right value of K just as the beginner level. Now, another example is with the breast cancer data set, load the data, and then now I'm gonna train a model so load it in a data frame any missing value of those things remove and now build the model here default setting of k and n so default it gives you a good performance here 94 percent accuracy and such data requires a little bit of scaling as well to improve the performance because these are all numeric values. So you need to scale the data. And you notice here from the previous, you have five errors with the scaling. Now uh, the number of errors have reduced or number of misclassifications have reduced. So what is the optimal value of K? You can try out a range of value starting with one and go up to 20, 29. In this range, I have taken only the odd number because that's the practice to use the odd number. And for each of the value of K, you know, train the model and predict and uh, store the accuracy. And the best accuracy you get is with the value of K being seven. Cross validation techniques can also help you find out the, um, you know, the best performance using a cross validation. So in this cross validation technique, you have find the best value being five. So these little variations in the result is quite possible. So once we have the knowledge, you can build the final model so that's how you use uh, you know basic techniques to find out the optimal value of k
So that was a quick demo on the you know techniques for finding the optimal value of k. In the next video, we'll talk about the issue of you know finding or having ties and how KNN or other machine learning models handle the issue of tie. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.